I should be chasing you, not replacing you Instead of disgracing you I know I should be living life in the grace from you It's time to check my heart That should be clear to see There's something standing between us And God, I know it's me I wanna live like my soul's on fire Fill my heart with the pure desire to serve morning it's 4 23 in the morning sunday morning easter morning resurrection sunday fam i'm on my way to church um, my buddy justin wrote a slam piece uh, to present uh, for easter services uh, he invited me to uh, fill in at the white Powell campus since he'll be uh, doing the poem over at the Kapolei campus. I've been practicing over the weekend, uh, over the weekend, over this past week, um, working on memorization and stuff. And it's a beautiful poem. Um, it's long. And this week has been insane. Um, my car shut down on me uh, on the way to work, and uh, the motor is done. So I was freaking out trying to find a way to get around and I don't I didn't have money for a new car man this whole week my devotions over the past couple weeks my devotions have been about trusting God and it just seems like every time that he put me into his word he was reminding me about trust and what faith means uh, even the night before my car broke down I was going to the songwriting competition. And right out, right outside the entrance was a was a uh, like an SUV. The license plate said P R O V three five, and I was like, it's got to be Proverbs three five, man. So I looked it up, and it was uh, trust in the Lord your God with all your heart, and lean not on your own understanding. And I was like, man, that's nice. I like that. Um, the very next morning, my car shut down, and I just thought it was funny. And I was like, wow, Lord, like. You, you for real, for real about what you say, <laughs> and uh, it wasn't just a, a pretty little uh, phrase. You, you, I think he was really trying to uh, instill in me a spirit of trust. And, um, I've been practicing this song for worship for views. Uh, it's called Presence, Power, Glory. Uh, the opening line is. Uh, Strip me back of all my pride, my possessions To all I want and all I seek is your presence And I was like, oh, I've been singing that non-stop throughout the week uh, Trying to get the, the song uh, prepared for this weekend And it was playing when my car broke down And if... If you don't think God has a sense of humor, you're mistaken, friend. Um, I just thought it was fitting that, that God had me where he had me for the past uh, couple weeks or so. And um, it really did prepare my heart for, for not freaking out uh, when everything went down. Uh, normally, I would panic. Um, I would start waking out. Because, you know, I, I live super far from my job. I can't, I can't bus it to my job because I start early in the morning. And the, the bus, a little shuttle thing that goes from the, the main road to my work doesn't run that early. So I have to, like, run. 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 <laughs> and if you know me, I will run. Then I got my son to worry about, and uh, all my 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 gigs. They I need to transport gear, and man, like normally I would wig out. So uh, God was telling me trust them. So I had been keeping in contact with my friends. All my friends were, you know, being super supportive, and you know, trying to see different ways that they could help. And, uh, so, anyways, um, my ex-wife, man, the the same woman. That I cheated on for years and years and then eventually left uh, her and my son for another lady just being like a scumbag um, she uh, told me that my old car that I had 
left with her when when we split. Um, she wasn't using it anymore. It hadn't been running for a long time. Um, but that I could go and try and get it started and see if I could get it to work. And um, she warned me like the car hadn't been started in a long time. It's been over a year since we started the car. We we're having some trouble with it, and you know, even when it was running, it was having these issues. Um, but I didn't. I didn't have options, man. Uh, went to go check out the car. First crack got it started. Um, took it around, driving around. There was a check engine light, and there were these um, weird Nissan issues um, where you have to teach the car how to idle after like something happens. Uh, the, the car was idling at like two, three thousand RPM. It was like super loud and crazy, and um, it worried me. Uh, so I spent like a whole day trying to get it to work and following all these instructions I found online and YouTube videos and nothing was working. Uh, so I went to my homie's house early in the morning and was gonna try some final tricks. Um, those tricks didn't work, man. Uh, so I sat in the car and I was praying, started it up again and it worked just fine. And then me and my homie that were there were just tripping out, just like, like something Something really cool has been happening over the past few days. If you don't, if you don't believe the same stuff I believe, if you don't understand what I'm getting at, and you don't. It doesn't make sense where I'm coming from with all this God and Jesus stuff. Like, I hope I'm not freaking you out. You know when you find when you find something cool, man. You wanna, you just wanna tell everybody about it. Like you found a cool restaurant, you found this cool spot, you discovered a new song, or there's this new artist that you really dig and. You just get so stoked on it. You want to just talk about it. You want, you want to like post about it. You want to, you know, let people know. And that's, that's where, that's where I am with my faith, man. I, I found so many powerful things that it's done in my life, and so many ways that it has brought joy and peace and comfort uh, to to everything around me. Um, I think it's dope, man. And I just wish that other people could experience that. So, um, this is what this weekend's all about. This is uh, Easter. Today we call Resurrection Sunday. Good Friday um, was this past Friday. And people were like, Good Friday, man. Ain't that when they were supposed to like, nail Jesus to a cross and like, they killed him? I'm like, yeah. But what's good about it is that he took that in my place. He took that in your place. He took that. He was perfect, man. And uh, the wages of sin is death. Jesus never sinned, so he, he had no reason. He had no reason to die. We're we're his reason, and it, we're a reason that he he chose and accepted. And that's powerful. That's what made the cross good. What's even better is today we we celebrate the resurrection of Christ. Like it's nice. It's nice that he loved us, and it's beautiful that he cared enough for us to take our punishment. But the, the great thing about Resurrection Sunday is not only is his heart big, his power is huge. It's big enough to overcome the grave. And in coming back to life, he's telling us that he took our sin uh, with him to the grave. And that as he rose to new life, we are also alive new. We are not, we're not the same as before. So, dude, that's dope, man. Like if you come from from stupid, broken, hurt, and just garbage like I came from, it's it's refreshing and it's freeing to know that that you're not bound by any of that. None of that has any power on you. I'm gonna pause this video now because I've been tuckety talk talk yapping yapping, and I do want to catch stuff throughout the day. So. Um, Aloha. See you in a little bit on this beautiful Resurrection Sunday. Shoots. All right, fam. I'm going to try and practice this piece on the way there. So I figured I might as well record it while I'm practicing. So this is by my homie, Justin Masuda. Um, killer, killer writer, man. He always presents powerful pieces uh, for the church. I really enjoy his work. Uh, so this is by him. Where are you? I've searched all this time and still I found nothing. You said there was more. You said there was promise. You told me there would be something I could hold on to. But it seems my fate has been sealed like you, trapped like the death that's claimed you. 
this life has also claimed me. Constantly searching for more, yet finding less. Fighting so hard for change, yet my emptiness remains the same. So, where are you? Graves like prisons have buried me deep beneath the soil of heartache. I've grown accustomed to this. I'm bound now by the weight of things unattained and left behind, desperately seeking the name that will give me the strength for this climb. I'm not strong enough to deal with the reality of this mess, my heart now barely beating the inside of my chest. I wasn't made for this. I wasn't created to handle my own brokenness. My breath's heavier, hands paler, the ground is colder. I wasn't ready for this. I stretch toward earthly thrones only to be thrown closer to this hell. I was told it would be better than this. With arms stretched forward as if I could capture the air, hold it in my hands and press it into my lungs, I want to breathe again. Where are you? I've packed my bags with regret and hitchhiked across lands of promiscuity and selfishness. I've gambled with strangers, traded my body for scrap pieces of others, my hollow frame now empty from vomiting my shame in the streets, lying in gutters hoping the rain of a second chance would bring me back to the ocean. Where are you? I'm buried beneath this mountain of regret, dead like you. Dead to the hope of a future and I'm ready to give up. So tell me that you're still here. Tell me that in this stupid mess of a life that you're somehow still near because this emptiness is too common. The loss is too much. This brokenness will only know freedom by the reality of your touch. So tell me that this death hasn't claimed only me and promised me that I will somehow truly be free. Man, that, that line about I've packed my bags full of regret and hitchhiked across lands of promiscuity and selfishness. That's, that, that, once that line hit me and I really like let it soak in, it, it destroyed me. Like, and talking about vomiting up your shame and lying in gutters. Like, man, that's how, that's how I felt about myself for like so much of my life. Just like so much self-disgust and like you're, you're whack, dude. You're a horrible person. Like, and even, even for the first several years of my walk, that's, that's all I saw. Like I didn't really see the goodness of Jesus and how how his goodness covered my ugliness. I, I just kept beating myself up over things from the past, things that I can't change, things that, that I could do nothing about, and it held me back from, from growing, from, from experiencing uh, the love of the Lord like fully. So whatever it is in your past, man, I don't know, homie, homegirl, whoever you is, Whatever it is that that you are saying you are based on things that you did or things that happened to you, man, that's not when when you have come to a place in your heart where you've accepted that Jesus is your Lord and Savior and that at the final day, the day of judgment, when when we stand before the Lord, that that Jesus is gonna say anything that that has gone on in your life, I paid the price for that, man. I, I died for that. My blood spilled to wash over all of that. And the, the pure, good life and holy life that, that, that I lived is now your identity. That covers you. I got you. Man, that's, that's so huge. There's, like, I, I think about the whole beginning of, of my Christian walk, like the first, like, several years my goal was to do enough good to cover up the bad but what kept happening was I would add some more bad I would add some more bad then I'd, I'd do good and I'd do good and I'd do good and then I'd slip up and like something else would happen man and it's it's a catch-up game that that ain't never gonna work there's never gonna be a point where you hit equilibrium of all your good is has covered your bad man it's just our flesh won't let that happen. But there is no thing in your life that the goodness of Jesus can't cover. That's also an equilibrium that will never be reached. There's no amount of anything dark or evil or anything like that that could overshadow or be more, um, I don't know what the word is, Whoa, there are so many cops out right now. But there's nothing higher that could 
negate what Jesus did. Um, and that's that's reassuring, and that that gives me at least the ability to to keep going forward when I fall back. That gives me the ability to admit to God when I've messed up. That gives me the ability to repent to the Lord. That gives me the ability to, to confess to my friends and have them walk with me through a place of restoration because I know that whatever it is that I did, that Jesus still covers it. I know that, that when I fall, that when I mess up, that I don't have to hide it because it doesn't erase what the Lord did for me. And for that whole beginning of my walk when I was trying to balance out the good and the bad, that wasn't so true. I would have to hide my mistakes from people because I didn't want the scale to get tipped back to you're, you're a bad person. Now I admit I'm a bad person. I admit that I'm, dude, I'm super jacked, man. It's been, how long have I been doing this Christian thing? 2008 to now that's um that's eight years and i i see my sin more clearly now than i did in the beginning i see the the sum of it i see i see the whole weight of it but it doesn't weigh me down because i'm free you know, that's that's a weird that is a weird oh man it's it's 4 47 in the morning and the words haven't woken up yet that is a weird this word i'm not gonna kick i'm not gonna pretend that i can stir up this word in me right now but as a weird thing you know that that now i can see more clearly just how much um i need jesus because of the amount of all the nastiness and dirtiness and fallenness that that i've experienced and done in my life but it doesn't doesn't have a hold on me i'm not a slave to it i'm not i'm not i'm not weighed down by it i do recognize the weight when i make a mistake and it does break my heart when i realize how i i've how I've turned away from God even in, in thoughts, in, in my way of thinking. But in his loving grace, I know that he's pulling me back to him every single time. And I'm not saying go out and just like do whatever you want, man. Jesus is cool with it. That is not true. Like, I don't know anybody that is like cool with like getting beat and whipped and then mocked and spit on and definitely not nailed to a cross, man. Even even while all that was going on, he was like, Father, forgive them, man. They don't know what they're doing. It's big love. It's big love. For me, like, man, I ain't never felt loved. Like, the whole time growing up, like, I, I came from a family background where we didn't tell each other, I love you. Like, we didn't talk, man. I was... I was raped when I was a little kid. I was about five years old, and I couldn't. I couldn't tell my family about it. And we're not. We don't talk. <laughs> Crazy. It feels good to know that love is real, and that love is for you, and that that love has a huge impact on the way that you see life, on the way that you you live your life. exit now so i'm gonna kill this camera one more again and then um, get ready for this church service this morning mm, excited i went to yesterday's service at our other campus to to be able to just be in the congregation and um, get to partake in the celebration without um being distracted by the operation side of it because today you know i'm gonna be like part of the program so i won't really get to to just sit back and enjoy the 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 resurrection celebration with the rest of the fam so um, it was beautiful watching the service justin justin's piece um was super touching from the from the audience side and i i just really hope that, that i do the piece justice and that people understand the message behind it the intention and the heart that justin had when he wrote it i'm not i'm not a slam poet like i rap and i act and uh i just hope
hope I do it right. You know what I'm saying? All right, fam. See you guys in a bit. So we're here in the old Leeward Waipahu campus. Got my guitar with me because I'm gonna be here until tonight for Fuse. Take a nap after main services before a Fuse rehearsal. So the church has a air conditioning, so it'll be a nice comfy nap. <laughs> Strip me back on my pride, my position. Good morning. It's all I want and all I seek is your presence. Stream me back up all my pride, my position To all I want, all I see I'm gonna turn it off now, turn it back on later It'll be fun Set
your mercy we pray so holy Soul's on fire. 